tell you a story about Jack and Ori. And now my story's begun. I'll tell you another of Jack and his brother. And now my story is done. <laughs> Ships come sailing by on Christmas Day, on Christmas Day. I saw three ships come sailing by on Christmas Day in the morning. And what do you think was in them then on Christmas Day, on Christmas Day? And what do you think was in them then on Christmas Day in the morning? Three pretty girls were in the men on Christmas Day, on Christmas Day. Three pretty girls were in the men on Christmas Day in the morning. And one could whistle, one could sing. And one could play on the violin Such joy was there at my wedding On Christmas Day in the morning Five plump peas in a pea pod pressed One grew, two grew, and so did all the rest They grew and grew and grew and grew and grew and never stopped till they grew so plump and portly that the pea pod popped.
Sitting on posties, eating buttered toasties, greasing their fisties up to their wristies. Oh, what beasties to make such feasties. Solomon Grande, born on a Monday, christened on Tuesday, married on Wednesday, took ill on Thursday, worse on Friday, died on Saturday, buried on Sunday. This is the end of Solomon Grande. One shoe off and one shoe on Diddle diddle dumpling my son John Diddle diddle dumpling my son John Went to bed with his trousers on One shoe off and one shoe on Diddle diddle dumpling my son John The Queen of Hearts, she made some tarts All on a summer's day The Knave of Hearts, he stole the tarts And took them clean away The King of Hearts called for the tarts And beat the Knave full sore the knave of hearts brought back the tarts and vowed he'd steal no more. Once upon a time, there was a prince. The prince was unhappy because he wanted to marry a princess. But he wanted her to be a real princess. One day, the prince set off to search the world for a real princess whom he could marry. He met many princesses, but there was always something that wasn't quite right. They were either too tall, too small, too happy, or too sad. Besides, he was never sure if they were real princesses. Some months later, the prince returned home, still without a princess, and very unhappy. Then one night, there was a terrible storm. The rain poured, the wind blew, and thunder and lightning shook the royal castle. Suddenly, there was a knock at the door. The old king took a candle and went to see who it could be. There, standing outside in the pouring rain, was a beautiful girl. She was so wet that water poured off her hair and clothes. Suddenly she spoke. I am a real princess, she said. The old king was intrigued, so he ushered her inside and called the queen, the prince, to come and see. The prince could not believe his ears when he heard her say, I am a real princess. The old queen also heard it and made up her mind to find out if this girl was indeed a real princess. Whilst the girl was being bathed and dried and dressed in dry clothes, the queen went to see about a bedroom for her. The queen had all the bedclothes taken off the bed. Then she placed a dried pea under the mattress. Twenty more mattresses were put on top, followed by twenty soft sheets. At the end of all that, the bed was so high that a tall ladder was needed to get in and out of it. When the princess had eaten and warmed up, the queen led her to bed and tucked her in. As the queen blew out the candles, she thought to herself, Now we shall discover if you are a real princess or not. In the morning, the queen went to wake the girl. However, she was already awake. The queen said, 
How did you sleep, my dear? Not very well, replied the girl. I do not know what was in the bed, but it was something hard, and now I ache all over. On hearing this, the queen was overjoyed, for she knew that only a real princess would have skin so sensitive to feel a pea through twenty mattresses and twenty soft sheets. She rushed to tell the prince the good news. He was overjoyed to discover that he had at last found a real princess. The queen now removed the pea and many of the mattresses and sheets so that the princess would in future sleep well. The prince and his real princess were soon married and there was great joy throughout the kingdom. As for the pea, it was placed in a museum. It may still be there today, unless someone has eaten it. You shall 
have a fishy when the boat comes in. Dance to your daddy, my little baby. Dance to your daddy, my little lamb. Dance to your daddy, my little baby. Dance to your daddy, my little lamb. Betty Botter bought some butter, but she said the butter's bitter. If I put it in my batter, it will make the batter bitter. But a bit of better butter will make my batter better. So she bought a bit of butter better than her bitter butter, and she put it in her batter, and the batter was not bitter. So it was better Betty Butter bought a bit of better butter. Ride a cock horse to Banbury Cross to see a fine lady. Upon a white horse, rings on her fingers and bells on her toes, and she shall have music wherever she goes. There was a crooked man, and he walked a crooked mile. He found a crooked sixpence upon a crooked stile. He bought a crooked cat, which caught a crooked mouse. And they all live together, in a little crooked house. For sorrow, two for joy, three for a girl, four for a boy, five for silver, six for gold, seven for a secret never to be told. <laughs> So was he. He called for his pipe and he called for his bowl and he called for his fiddlers three. Hector Protector was dressed all in green. Hector Protector was sent to the Queen. The Queen did not like him. No more did the King. So Hector Protector was sent back again. Once upon a time, there was a poor miller who had a beautiful daughter. One day, the king sent for the miller, 
The miller was so scared at seeing the king that he said the first thing that popped into his head. I have a daughter who can spin straw into gold, he said. The king was intrigued by this and told the miller to bring his daughter to the castle. The next day, as instructed, the miller took his daughter there. The king led her into a room full of straw. The only other things in there were a stool and a spinning wheel. You must spin all this straw into gold by the morning, or else you must die, said the king. Then he locked the door behind him. The miller's daughter sat down with astonishment. She had no idea how to spin straw into gold, and very soon the thought of what would happen to her in the morning made her cry. <laughs> Suddenly the door flew open and in walked a strange little man with a long ginger beard. What will you give me, said the man, if I spin this straw into gold for you by the morning? I will give you my necklace, said the girl. The little man took the necklace and straight away started spinning. He worked all night until, just as the sun rose, he finished. Before the miller's daughter could thank him, he had vanished. The king was surprised and pleased to see all the gold, but this only made him more greedy. He led the girl into a second room, larger than the first one. It too was full of straw. Again the king told the girl to spin all the straw into gold by the morning, or she must die. Once more the girl began to cry, and no sooner had she begun than the door flew open and in walked that strange mannequin. What will you give me, said the mannequin, if I spin this straw into gold for you by the morning? I will give you my ring, said the girl. The mannequin took the ring and started to spin. Just as the sun rose, the mannequin finished and then disappeared. The king was overjoyed to see so much gold. However, he still wanted more. He led the poor girl into a third room, even bigger than the last, and filled with even more straw. This time he said, If you spin this straw into gold by morning, I shall make you my queen. Very soon the girl sat alone, crying. The strange little man appeared once more. What will you give me if I spin the straw for you this time? he said. Alas, I have nothing to give you, said the girl. The mannequin thought for a while and then said, uh, Promise me that if you become queen, you will give me your first child. The girl thought the prospect of this happening was so remote that she gave her word and agreed to the mannequin's promise. So once more the little man sat himself at the spinning wheel and spun all the straw into gold. The king was filled with joy when he saw the gold and soon after he married the miller's daughter and she became his queen. A year after they were married, the queen gave birth to a lovely baby. Both king and queen were very happy. Indeed, the queen had been so happy since her marriage that she had quite forgotten about the strange little man and her promise to him, until one evening the door to her bedroom burst open and in walked the mannequin. Now give me what you promised, he said, pointing to the baby. The queen was horrified and held her baby tightly. She pleaded with the mannequin not to take a child and instead offered him all the riches in the kingdom. But when he refused, she broke down and wept bitterly. Seeing this, the mannequin felt pity on the queen and decided to give her one last chance. I will give you three days, he said, and if in that time you can guess my name, you can keep your child. The next day, the queen sent her messenger to collect all the boys' names he could find. In the evening, when the little man returned, the queen repeated the list of names to him. But after each name, the mannequin said, No, that is not my name. The same happened the next day, and on the third day, the messenger was once again sent out. 
It was quite late when the messenger returned and went straight away to see the Queen. On the way back to the castle, he said, I took a route through the woods. I came across a little house with a fire burning outside and the strangest little man I have ever seen singing and dancing around it. And this is what he was singing. Although today I brew and bake, tomorrow the Queen's own child I'll take. This guessing game she'll never win, for my name is Rumpelstiltskin. On hearing this, the Queen was overjoyed, and when the mannequin arrived that night, she questioned him as though she did not know his name. Um, is your name Twinkletoes? she asked. No, that is not my name, he replied. Is your name Theophily? she asked. No, that is not my name, he replied. Is your name by any chance Rumpelstiltskin? What? shrieked the man. How did you know? Her witch has told you, he shouted. He jumped up and down with anger and then stomped furiously out of the room. The mannequin was never seen again, and the king, queen and their child lived happily ever after. The lion and the unicorn were fighting for the crown. The lion beat the unicorn all round about the town. Some gave them white bread, and some gave them brown. Some gave them plum cake and drummed them out of town. Fast as you can, pat it and break it and mark it with. 